Michelle Umloff. We have such an exciting program lined up for you this evening as we have two very, very special guests. And um, Sue, if you're listening to me, um, can you show your screen? Uh, welcome to the Pocket Full of Love webinar. We have such an exciting event planned for you this evening, so you want to stay tuned until the very end because we have some surprises for you. But first, uh, let me um, tell you, Sue, if you don't mind going to the second screen. If you have any technical problems, and I'm in the middle of something right now and I can't do that, please call the technical support number at the number you see listed on that screen. It's 855-352-9002. That's a fantastic team. They will get you up and running in no time, I promise. Sue, could you please take me to the next screen? And I guess that's up about now. I changed the screen out. If you need assistance navigating to the webinar section of the Salky.com website, you can see here that you'll log into the website and look for education and events, then look for Sewing Online with Salky webinars. And then from that area, you'll see all of the webinars from the, the past listed and you can just click on any of those webinars to download the videos and the questions and answers and you'll be good to go. And if you want to follow our progress as we upload things to the Pocket Full of Love webinar, this is where you're going to start. Can you go to the next screen, please? So my Vanna White happens to be Sue Hausman, and we're so excited to have Sue with us as one of our special guests. And Ellen is also our special guest. Ellen Osten is the National Director of Education for Salky. Both Sue and Ellen team up for a very fun presentation with us this evening, and they're going to give you all kinds of creative ideas for not only your gift making, but your sewing and memorializing some of your projects. Ellen's going to start off um, in a moment and show you a way to make a hot pocket without using your embroidery machine. And then Sue's going to show you a way to use uh, your embroidery machine to make some really cool pockets. And you can see them um, on our screen here. We're just delighted to have Sue join us. You know that she's a world-renowned embroidery and sewing expert, and she's authored over 30 books. So we're just delighted to have her with us again. And yes. so then yes. our next one was our introduction for Carol Ingram. As most of you know, she passed away very, very suddenly a, a few weeks ago. We, we all were completely in shock about it. She is a fabulous designer, has been part of the Salky team for many years, and when you, when you look through all of the Salky books and our online classes, and those of you who have been to our, our Sit and Sew teacher certification, she's done a majority of the projects for these and just has shared her talent with us a hundred percent and so when we all received the news that she had passed it was so shocking because um, it just was unbelievable and so we're still all kind of a, in a upset about that and and so if we get a little teary on some of this you'll I hope you'll understand and again some of you have known her personally also, and so we're dedicating this program to Carol Ingram, a friend, mother, sister, daughter, and, and I think of her every day. I get ready to send her or call her for something, and I realize she's up there in heaven overlooking us. And the other day, Fred shared a, a neat thing on the Facebook with us, and he saw this cardinal that kept uh, fluttering around her home, and we found out later that a cardinal is is a gift from heaven and showing you that that special person is near so we and I have cardinals in my backyard so I know she's she's near us so everything that we're doing with this program tonight is dedicated to in in, in memory of our special Carol 
And as you look at the slide, you see already some of the projects that she has done. And in fact, our current teacher certification online is several of these projects. I think nine out of the ten, if I correct, she designed. And so it's just heartwarming that we can continue to share all the things that she has done for us. She's just been fabulous. And the project that you're going to receive in honor and memory of Carol is the Sulky Illusionary Bars. And this was actually a program that Carol did with America Sews with Sue Houseman. And so I think you can see your screen right now. And it originally it was in the dimensional concept in Sulky. And it was also one of Sue's America Sews program, and I hear that they were actually singing and caroling on the on the movie on the you know the TV program. So I wish I'd seen that. And so there'll be a special link that Michelle will be sending out later, and you'll learn how that you can download these projects. And in fact, Kelly is recording this whole program for you. So those that are not able to tune in, or if you can't stay with us for the whole program, you'll be able to go to the Salky website by Friday and see it again and, and not be afraid of missing anything. And here again, when you look at this little wall hanging, then this again was the Magical Tigers. It's a project from Salky Online Course, Magical Thread Art, which just started on the 11th and it ends on the 4th of April. And so there's still time for you to sign up and join us. And we have everything listed and outlined for you. And I just marvel at the talent that Carol had. She could just look at a piece of string and then do something marvelous with it. And then this is another program, just like the tigers that I showed you a moment ago, but this is the floral version. And this free design by Carol, this is at the Salky Embroidery Club. You'll be able to go to the Embroidery Club and download this for free. Again, a special dove with a loving heart for in remembrance of her. And there's a code that you'll be able to put in. Uh, I think it's free dove in all caps. And so you'll want to make sure you, you um, load it as it says, and then you'll be able to get it free. And of course, while you're there, we want you to look around because there's so many neat things that Carol has designed and also Joyce Drexler. So lots of neat, neat things for you to, to take part of. So can we get started with our pocket full of love? I, well, I was told, but then I decided that I agreed with it, that we needed to also do a pocket that was just machine sewn. No special embroidery machine, just a regular sewing machine. And even if you have just a basic machine, remember your built-in utility stitches also become fancy. And so this little pocket full of love, it starts with your sewing machine. and. Here we have all of the supplies listed for you. Salky Tender Touch, which is one of my favorite fusible stabilizers. The Tear Easy Stabilizer. We also use Salvi Water Soluble. KK2000, our temporary spray adhesive. I'm using the 40 weight rayon thread. You can also use any of the other decorative threads that we have. And in fact, as we build our project, I'll be using our new poly light, which is the 60 weight, and also our blendables, which are 100% cotton, and they are dyed every two and a half to five inches so that they do not have a predictable repeat. And I really hope that you're using a quarter inch seam allowance foot, and if you have not gotten one for your machine, to me that's a must have. And the edge stitching foot is optional, but if you have it, we'll be using that your applique foot, pinking shears, your fabric. We give you the dimensions on what to cut your good fabric and then the squared pieces, your pencil or a fabric marking pen, all-purpose thread for sewing your fabric, your top stitch needle, 1280 or 1490, and your general sewing supplies. Remember, to me, general means 
anything that I can't live without in my sewing room, even though it's not listed, I'm going to bring it to, to use because I just don't know if I need it or not. And, of course, the original heart pattern that is, completely detailed with all the different things that you need to do with the heart and that's free with this this webinar so as we begin in step one if your fabrics need to be pressed you want to do that and I'm using a good quality quilters type of fabric it's a hundred percent cotton and I want it to behave very nicely so I have on all of the fabrics that I'm using today I've actually taken the tender touch and press that to the wrong side of all of the squares and including the six by six square that is going to be the back of the pocket and you want to double check the setting on your iron and if need be you may need to use a press cloth, uh, press cloth because if you get the iron too hot it will do ugly things to the tender touch and I don't want it to go any farther with that. It's not a pretty sight. So you can see that I've pressed the fabrics. I have fused the tender touch onto the back of the wrong side of the fabrics. And in step two, I've threaded my machine with my all-purpose thread. I've got a fresh new needle in the machine. I put my quarter-inch foot on, and that's so that as I sew, I'm going to do a quarter-inch seam allowance. And I went ahead and chain piece them and then after they were chain stitched that's meaning the two squares chained stitched and then press the seams to one side so that they're opposite of each other and then when you have pressed those seams to one side then you'll match them up so that the joint seams kind of meld together so that the center will be as close together as possible and you'll end up with a little four patch block. Now this final seam that we have sewn, first I'm going to take the iron and meld or set the stitches and then I'm going to press the seam open. And the reason why we're doing this is so that we have are, are reducing the bulk. And I know most of you will know this and all that, so again, don't think that I'm talking down to you. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with this. So, so far, I just am so pleased with you all. We're doing a great job. So now I'm ready to thread my machine with my 40 weight rayon, and I use the same color in the bobbin, or you can use the matching 60 weight poly light in the bobbin. And the reason why I use this instead of bobbin thread, when I'm using the built-in decorative stitches, if by accident some of the bobbin thread pulls to the surface, it could make my pretty thread look a little speckly. And so I want it to be as bright colorful-wise as possible. So that's what I always do when I'm doing decorative stitching. And so I'm going to take the two small squares of the Tear Easy and spray both with the KK2000 so they act as one piece and then lightly spray the top piece and then place it underneath the patchwork. And at this point, I'm now going to replace my regular or my quarter inch foot with the applique foot. And I personally like to work with my open toe applique foot. This enables me to see where I'm stitching and I can plant those stitches right where I want them. So I'm going to be sewing over the, the four patches on all of the seams. And when you look at this picture close up, you can see I've used a little built-in letter for the monogram and the tear easy again is there to keep the stitches from puckering and looking messy and believe me if you do it without the tear away you will see the difference between tunneling and puckering as opposed to having nice crisp pretty stitches once i've done that i've got the four patch all stitched and ready to go and then I'm going to take the six inch square that we already prepped with the tender touch and you're going to have your pocket pattern and place that on the wrong side of the square and then trace the heart shape with a fabric marker or a fabric pencil and when you're doing that you're going to notice that there are two little quarter inch hash marks that come out and one will say where you start and the other one will say where you end and we're actually going to sew a quarter of an inch into the stitching line and then pivot and then stitch right on top of the pencil line 
as we go all the way around. And you can see on step five where we are, where I kind of did a right angle stitch. And by the way, I do shorten the stitch length to 2.0 when I'm stitching this. And I did go back to my quarter inch seam allowance to do my stitching. Now you could use your all-purpose foot if you wanted to, but I find when I'm doing straight stitch precision stitching, I like to go back to the quarter inch foot because it's holding that area nice and flat against the machine bed and I'm going to have a better stitch, more likely no skip stitches, that kind of thing. So that's just my, my personal preference. So once we have done that, of course, you've, you've re-threaded with all-purpose thread so that your stitches are going to be nice and uniform. And you're going to continue to stitch along the trace line, shorten the stitch length. It's going to make it easier to sew along the small curve of the heart bottom. Make sure you're using your needle up-down feature. This is really important to stop in the down position. That way, when you're adjusting stitching on the line, you don't need to worry about losing your stitch place. Now, look at step seven. This is very, very important. The heart has cleavage. And now, don't get, oh, I know you're out there. When you arrive at the heart cleavage, that's the top of the heart, we're going to stitch down pivot halfway and then do two little stitches across and then pivot so you're now again lined up with the trace line and continue to stitch. Have you ever stitched right to the point and then pivot and, and continue stitching on and then when you clip into the point and you turn it right side out and it's kind of twisted and yucky looking, it won't lay kind of nicely? These two stitches will allow for turn of the cloth, and it actually gives you a more perfect looking clean turn than if you didn't do it. So this is something you pick up from dressmaking and that type of thing, and a lot of these things all meld together and transfer back and forth. So I just love it. So then when we finish and we reach the end sewing mark, we're going to stop with needle down again and pivot and sew off at least a quarter of an inch. Now, if you're wondering why do I have to do that, by leaving that extra amount, look at step nine. We've used the pinking shears to trim right next to the stitching line as close as possible without cutting the stitches. And then when we get back to the start and the stop, the sewing marks leave a good quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, notice how I've trimmed with the pinking shears. So I kind of got really close to the stitching. That way, when I, I don't have to clip the curves, my pinking shears have done that. But by leaving a generous seam where allowance where the opening is, then when we turn this right side out after we've pr quick pressed the seams and all that, when we turn it right side out, that little seam allowance tucks right in, it folds right into position, and you don't have to struggle with it. And you don't even have to worry about hand sewing it shut, because we're going to take care of that when we stitch it to our project. So now we've finger pressed the edges, we get ready, and then press both sides of the pocket. And just to be on the safe side, make sure that you have the iron temperature just right so that you don't mar the threads or scorch your fabric. Now, before we can actually put our pocket onto our t-shirt or tote bag, whatever you want to do with it, we need to pre-top stitch the top of the pocket. So when you look at the heart pattern, I have two little darts marked on there where top stitching starts, and then the second dot is where the top stitching stops. And I use an edge stitching foot, or you can take your straight stitch foot if you need to, whatever works for you so that you have a nice, clean mark to run along the edge of the pocket and top stitch your pocket right there. And the solvey is tucked a half inch in underneath the pocket edge, 
so that it gives the machines and the feed dogs something to sew on. Not all machines like to sew on a kind of an air-like thing, and so I always use a little bit of stabilizer to support that. And the reason why I'm using Salty is so that it doesn't show when I remove it. And I don't want to rinse the whole thing, but I can just take a wet Q-tip and blot the remainder off. So now after I've done the top stitching, I'll just pull those threads to the underside and we'll continue on with our piece here. Again, we've got everything listed for you in your directions of what we're doing. And so we already co covered these steps. And then in number 12, again, just gently pull the salve away from the stitches. And at this point, then you're going to take your shirt, if you're using a t-shirt and you want to audition the placement of the pocket. So I recommend putting the shirt on and then lightly spray the back of the heart pocket with your KK2000 and then hold it up to yourself and put it where you want it so it's not on top of your booby or down by your belly button. You want it in a nice pleasing area. And then take your shirt back off. The KK2000 should still be holding the heart in position. And then you're going to take two layers of the Tear Easy Stabilizer and spray both of them with the KK2000 and then place that on the wrong side of the shirt so it supports the area where the pocket's going to be stitched. Again, we've got to have that so that we have a, a beautiful top stitching. If you don't have it, then it could tear the knit. It can look puckery and pulled and pinched. You won't be happy. I wouldn't be happy. So at step 12, we're ready to sew the pocket onto our shirt. And so you're going to start stitching at the dot where you ended just a moment ago. And what I do is a couple of stitches, back stitch, and then go on with that. I leave the thread tails long so that I can pull them to the back at the end. And I'm just stitching right along the edge. And then I'm going to stitch until I get to where my preview stitching on the top of the heart pocket is. And just a couple of stitches over that. And that is going to reinforce the beginning and the ending of the pocket so that it doesn't kind of tear away when you're wearing them. So I hope you can see from, from the pictures how simple this really is. All right. So then at this point, you're ready to remove the tear easy. And again, remove one layer at a time. And it tears away just like butter. It's just unbelievable how simple it is. And I do put my finger on the thread just to make sure that I'm not going to yank and, and pull it. Because remember, we're working with our decorative threads. So we, we don't want to take a chance on popping those. And then once that's all away, the you shouldn't have to worry about removing anything else from it because the tear easy will come away very cleanly. If there's a little bit there, it, it really won't hurt anything unless it's scratchy against your skin and then you can take your tweezers and, and, uh, and possibly pull it out. But you shouldn't even have to worry about that. And so here, ta-da, what do you think? Pocket on the right has got our is got is the original patchwork one that was just simply done with some decorative stitching and then I had my little Dorothy shoes and wand and that just dresses that up completely. And then here we went a step farther with more stitches in between all the little areas of the heart and then I actually used a built-in stitch from the sewing machine for the monogram. And it just adds a simple little touch to that. So I hope that you will love to use this for Valentine's Day. It, if you're not into wearing shirts and that type of thing, then it can be done on tote bags, carriers, towels, pot holders. Just imagine. Or even do it double and finish. Put a little, little uh, decorative cording on it, and you've got a neat little purse. So lots of things that we can play with. On through this, we've got other lots and lots of ideas that you can go from and use just about any shape that you'd like. Here I've made this leaf pocket, and it's all done the same way. I did all the work through it, twin needles, different things, and then sewed right sides together, turned it right side out, and then top stitched it onto the shirt, same way that we just did our heart. So it's a great way to 
get use out of your machine and all those wonderful stitches that we buy these machines for and then we never use them. Are you like me and do that too? So this is an opportunity that we can make this and do this. So then another version. I had more of this fabric that was already cut for another project. So I took two, two of the squares and then two more of them and twisted them so they were going in different directions sewed them all together and then back them with the tender touch also. Even though this is good quality fabric, I didn't want it I wanted the fabric to have a nice hand to it and no wrinklies and that kind of stuff. And so then I put a piece of fusible web on the back side of the four squares and put them on a tote bag and then I did audition to make sure that I liked the looks of it and fused it in position and then you can see close up where I used the blendable 30 weight cotton size 90 top stitch needle to stitch along the edges. Now before I actually fused the square in place I used the wavy cutter or you can use scallop scissors or pinking shears to trim the edges and you don't have to worry about raveling because the fusible web, the tender touch will all prevent that. And then just to make it pretty, I used de decorative stitches on all, all different sides of the, of the square. Now, because this was so busy, I decided to just do a solid heart, but the fabric has a little bit of coloring and swirling in it. So I just again used the blendables and I echo stitched the entire pocket from the inside out and just use the edge of my presser foot as my guide. And you can barely see it, but on the close-up, there's a little bit more all stitched in position. And then the other side of this tote bag, I put a really pretty monogram. And this is going to be a gift for my mom. Believe it or not, we've got five generations now. If any of you friended me on Facebook, you've seen my new great-grandbaby. So anyway, lots of things are going on. So here's another variation. Same leaf pocket that was on my shirt earlier is on this super, super placemat. And you can put your napkins in there, your silverware. Can you imagine gifting that to somebody? Just a gorgeous project. And of course, Sue asked if we could do a involved pocket but still not done in the hoop. Well, I decided we got to do a pocket full of sunshine because that reminds me of Carol. And so the pocket on the left and the pocket on the right are both the same. I just took the ribbons that you see on there and one has them turned flat and the other one has them fluffed out. And neat, neat way, I again stabilized all of the fabrics with the tender touch and then started with two circles and I used the chevron fabric for the pocket part and I used the chevron to stitch the little zigzag on top and turn that down and then programmed my built-in stitches on the sewing machine and I used the 60 weight poly light to do the stitching. Now of course you could use the blendables or the 40 whatever you would like. It's your pockets. And I actually stitched out the full line of pocket full of sunshine on a strip of fabric and then I cut each word out the way that I wanted them on the pocket and those became my templates so that I had the, the exact start and stop for pocket, the exact start and stop for full of, and the exact start and stop for sunshine. Now I know that there, we can go back and do this all on the computerized embroidery. I'm going to do that too, but I wanted to just show you that if, if you don't have an embroidery machine, you can still make fancy, fancy pockets. We've got lots and lots of things that you can do with that. And then I just finished this all up, turned it right side out. The little petals blossomed out of the sunshine rays, and then I used the hollow shimmer and a tiny little blanket stitch to stitch the sunshine pocket down. And I used this really bright green tote bag because I was kind of tired of t-shirts. Sorry. <laughs> and with that, we have a, well, let me say, let's back up for just a second. I really want to thank you all for being here with us this evening, and I know we've got lots more to share with you, and I want you all to know how much I appreciate your time. And 
we're always available to you. So after this is over and you still got questions and contact comments or something, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And again, I want to just thank you all so much for being here with me. And I think that I'm hoping everybody's got their glitches worked out and we can go back to the to the regular program. Hi. I'm here, Ellen. Yay. I am. Oh, so, wow. That was scary. So um, <laughs> can you uh, maximize your screen for me so we can look yes. at that next slide, please? Thank yes. you. Let me see. Boy, that was do. really scary. <laughs> Are we all good to go now? I'm I here think now, so. too, so if you want to pass it to me, Ellen, I can flip okay. these next two slides. Let, all righty. Oh, I'm so glad that you are here. Yay! Well, while they're doing that... We all ended up having, ended up having to quit and restart our, our program, and we apologize if anybody missed anything. I think it was mostly us in the background that had the issue. Well, I guess they're, I'll bet they're happy that they're not going to have to listen to me for the whole hour. My gosh, but... <laughs> <laughs> and again, Thank you, Ellen. My pleasure. You did a and... job, Ellen. We're proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, glad we had our dress rehearsal soup. today. <laughs> Love you all. Well, Michelle, you... Michelle's going to talk about the coupon, right? Yes, I will. I'm, uh, I'm glad we had our dress rehearsal a little earlier, and Ellen was taking notes and listening to us, and she pulled it off wonderfully. So if we probably didn't say anything about it, you all probably would not have thought we had some technical issues on our end, but I think we're all back now. So we have a chance for someone out there to receive a $25 off coupon for the Salky website. And what we ask for you to do is to take a really short survey for us. There's eight questions. And when we end the webinar this evening, the the, the survey will pop up. Um, if you decide to wait to take the survey, it will show up again. There's going to be another email message that comes out about an hour after the webinar. You'll get some information in that email, and there will also be a button that you can click on to take this uh, survey again. And we will draw a random name by Friday. So uh, we just ask that you please give us some feedback about us, and please don't hold it against us that we had these tech technical issues um, this, this evening, but we want to we value your opinion. So if you can go to the next screen, please. We have it. We would like to do yes I do. We would like to have a door prize drawing. And the way everybody that is here tonight is automatically entered into the door prize. I have a list of all the attendees and I'm just going to randomly pick a name here and see who we come up with for our winner. And our winner is going to uh, send me an email message at SalkyWebinar at gmail.com with your shipping address. And our lucky winner tonight is Karen, and I'm going to mess your name up, and there's probably like a dozen Karens on here. Um, say, say S-E-H-L, Karen Sale, S-E-H-L. And Karen, if you're out there, go ahead and type a message, and we'll just say, yay, congratulations, you're the winner. And um, yeah, just send me that email message. And we'll uh, send you these nice products out, a copy of the Dimensional Concepts in Salky, which uh, Carol Ingram was a contributor to some projects in there, and a package of sticky Fabrisolvi. It's actually one of my favorite. They're all my favorite, but that one's one of my favorite, and some poly light thread. So uh, without further ado, I know we've had some delays. I'm going to turn things over to Sue and let her take it away. Hi, everybody. It's just a pleasure to be here. It was really very scary because we were all muted. We couldn't say anything, and Ellen was the only one that could speak. So thank you for your patience with this. I'm excited to be here tonight to share with you another way of creating the pocket. You know, the pocket is a very fun accessory today. It's on men's garments, it's on women's garments, it's on children's garments, and it's used in accessories as well. The pockets you're looking at now are part of our Zen pocket group, plus the little one down in front, which is actually on the Sulky Embroidery Club. It's uh, design number 1158, and you might want to go there and Embroidery Club 
the Sulky Embroidery Club, I think you know you register, but it doesn't cost anything to register, and there's so many great designs. But here you see a variety of some of the designs that we have done in the Sulky Zen program. So the design file that I'm using for the sh ones I'm showing you actually comes with the Zen classes. And I'm here to tell you that it's very exciting to know that we're also going to be offering this class again. It will come up February 15, 2016, coming up very soon. However, you can register for it now. And I will say, if you haven't seen any Zen programs, please go to the website, take a look at the introductions, and just know that this is an online program, Zen 1, which virtually all of that can be done in a 4x4 hoop, and Zen 2, which gets more into combining designs and using 5x7 hoops, but they are all different techniques that will teach you all about embroidery. And as Ellen and I have traveled around the country, we've had so many people say to us, wow, I learned more about embroidery and more about my sewing machine in this two-day class than I have learned in the five years I've owned my machine. So I would encourage you to sign up for the Zen Combo. You not only get to watch it, you get to keep it. You download it and it's put on your hard drive and you get to look at it whenever you want to do it. All the videos, all the materials, materials, the project instructions, the supply list, the manuals, everything that comes with it. If you were taking it from us in a hotel or a store, you get it. And all of them are tons of value for you, plus includes 27 designs that we use in the projects and different types of designs and how to hoop and when to hoop and not to hoop. Plus you get 20 plus bonus designs, a puffy foam alphabet, actually lots of font design sets, and a manual with 30 sections of instructions. So I hope you'll consider joining us for the Sulky Online Zen program. And here's a picture of Ellen and myself on the set of the videotaping. And we're really excited to be bringing this to you because so many people couldn't get to the live ones in the hotels or at stores, and they wanted to take Zen. Now you can. Well, the pockets that we're showing, as I said, we're not giving you the file for this, although there are lots of files out there for pockets, but we've given you the pocket that you can do and all the instructions and the pattern that you can do on your sewing machine without an embroidery machine. But we also know many of you have embroidery machines, and these pockets are all the rage. Think about them on quilts, children's quilts. They could put things in their little pockets. I actually like to put a pocket on the back of a quilt. I give because I can put a special personal note in there, but I also have ladies that put extra fabric for the quilt in the pocket on the back. It's the label is a pocket. So all kinds of pockets full of love. And while Ellen, yours is so perfect for Valentine's Day, which is coming up, I'm going to make that and put it on a red shirt to wear for Valentine's Day. And you, of course, could do these in the hoops in a theme for Valentine's well, Day as well. This pocket that we do in Zen is about four and an eighth wide and a four and a quarter high from the point. And you can see that you can do it with puffy foam and without puffy foam. And, of course, supply list you will have as you review this. But basically, we work with Sulky Faber Salvi in the hoop. And that, of course, goes away with very little trouble with water just instantly disappears and then you have your pocket to stitch on. You'll need fabric for your pocket, tender touch, thread of course, bobbin thread. By the way, I love the Sulky Prewound bobbins. If you haven't tried them, give them a try. And the Sulky KK2000, an embroidery needle, size 1490. And if you want to do puffy foam, you're going to need puffy foam. Now, many people think of tender touch, the Sulky permanent iron-on stabilizer, as a cover the back stitching. So in other words, when you do the embroidery, especially for a baby or for someone with sensitive skin, they put it at, on the back of the completed embroidery to make the back soft. But keep in mind that it's a fabulous soft stabilizer and actually doesn't change the hand of your fabric. I use this always when I'm doing embroidery on knits and things. That's all in the Zen program. But it's perfect for these pockets and for pockets that we would put on, on the knit fabrics. So right now you're going to see the actual instructions that you will get as a part of your Zen training too with the designs and all the information in this course that you can register for now. The pocket full of love First, you'll take the material that you're going to use for your pocket, and you will actually fuse tender touch 
the rough side to the wrong side of your fabric with an up and down motion. And remember not to have your iron too hot because when you put your temperature too hot with any of the fusible stabilizers, fuse and stitch or tender touch, they get too hot and they sometimes shrivel a little bit. So keep it at a good temperature and also up and down motion. I like to use steam that makes it adhere much better. And then, of course, step two is to hoop those two layers of sulky fabric salvi in a 5x7 hoop and slide that hoop onto your machine. You are ready to go. Now, decide what design you'd like to do. These are some of our Zen 2 embroidery designs. And there we see our fleur-de-lis. And these are puffy foam designs, a big, beautiful alphabet for puffy foam. And they come from apexembroiderydesigns.com. As you can see, Apex EMB. Designs.com. So if you're interested in beautiful designs for puffy foam, take a look at that website. Okay, step three, thread the machine with the color you'll use for your outline, something you can see on white, and then stitch the first color. First color stop is going to give you the outline of the pocket. So it tells you right where to place the fabric. It's all done for you by your embroidery machine. Slide the hoop off the machine, Lightly spray over that little outline of the pocket, that's the design area, with KK2000. And then on a flat surface, you're going to position the fabric. Remember you put tender touch on the wrong side? You're going to position that wrong side up. Now keep with me here. So that about an inch or less even is over the bottom stitch point of the pocket. And the excess of that fabric is up to the top of the hoop. Keep in mind, wrong side up, smooth the fabric over that stitch placement line, and you are ready to go. Now make sure that that fabric, when you get the hoop that slid back on your machine, that that fabric that's up at the top doesn't get caught. Well, that would never happen to you, right, under the hoop? No. So slide the hoop back on, stitch color two. That's the fold line at the top of the pocket. Now, watch what happens because the fold line is stitched. You slide the hoop off once more, place it on a flat surface, lightly spray KK2000 on the wrong tender touch side of the fabric below that stitched fold line. Fold that top excess fabric down over the sprayed area. Make it nice and flat, taut, and smooth. Look at that. Your pocket is taping shape taking shape. Make sure that any stripes or patterns or chevron are straight. There's no ripples and the wrong sides of the fabric are now together. The tender touch sides and the right side of the fabric and the pocket are up. So stitch color three, you can see that is the tack down stitch for the sides and the bottom of the pocket. Here's the key, and I forgot to do this the first time. Slide off the hoop, set it on a flat surface, and use your applique scissors to trim the sides and the bottom of the pocket. And you'll want to trim this very close, closely to the stitching. Trimming very closely is essential. And as we go forward, you'll see that if you should nip, this is what happened to me down in the right uh, lower part of that pocket, I took a little nip out of the stitching and the pocket. So I put a piece of transparent tape over it to hold that nip area down so that the satin stitch could trap it in the remainder of the stitching and it worked like a charm. Now, step nine is to stitch color stop four. That is that decorative satin stitch around the pocket. But here's what sets this pocket that is in the Zen Design Collection, apart from other pocket designs. Because what it does, it has a stitch that's decorative, stitch color number five. It's like a bead stitch that stitches down, beading stitch down that satin stitch. It's a beautiful pocket. You wouldn't have to put a design on it. It's going to top stitch the top edge. You could use the pocket as it is, but there's going to be more. We're going to actually put designs on the pocket, and you will use a puffy foam design. Just cut that piece. Don't have a huge piece. Cut it larger than the design. You don't want it hanging out and in the way. And lay it right on top with a little KK2000 to hold it in place, and now you're ready to stitch your design. Color one will be a perforation stitch to tack the puffy foam down and make it easy to remove later the excess. And then stitch number two, which is the satin stitch of that Zen. And because this design is digitized for puffy foam, the ends are going to finish with a taper. So the puffy foam will tear away cleanly with minimal pokies. Now, take a look. It's stitched all out. 
slide your, your hoop off the machine and gently just pick up that puffy foam. It's going to perforate right away. You may see some little bits, but usually we hardly see any. But if you do, take a little tweezer and pick any little bits off. But more often, you might see just a little bit of pokies, and that's easy to take care of because you just hold a steam iron over the design. Don't set it down on the design. Hold it over, and the hot steam makes those pokies go and kind of shrink back in to the design satin stitch. It's so easy to do. This is actually another shirt that I did. It's a design that was digitized for Selkie Puffy Foam. It's part of a Viking embroidery collection for Puffy Foam, and it's one, one of the really pretty ones. Now, to remove the fabric salvi, I just trim away the excess, about an eighth of an inch away, and then you can actually run a damp cloth around the edge, or you can just hold it under the warm tap and then lay it in a flat surface to dry. You all know how quickly and easily fabric salvi removes. Just in an instant, it dissolves away. Now, this pocket that we're looking at was not adorned with any embroideries or anything. Kind of boring. But to stitch it onto your garment, you will use KK2000 to put it in place. Try that garment on to be sure that it's in a good spot, not right on your boob or whatever. And then simply stitch with silky invisible thread around the sides. Or maybe you want to do a decorative little wine tam or hand look stitch along the side. Use the same color if you want as your satin stitch. Be sure to do a tie off at the top of the pocket, especially those working pockets because it'll get some stress up there. Real quickly, I want to tell you about something that I went on to do with this, the fussy positioning theme fabrics. This was so much fun. I have so much cute fabric. And I did uh, the little Indian girl for me. She's actually not, she's a little Native American girl. And then we have the little cowboy and we have the little cat. And so, very Arizona, the first two, the third one for my granddaughter. Stitch or trace a template outline. I love to make templates out of soft and sheer stabilizer. I make patterns out of it as well. The template pattern is part of a gift we're giving you after the webinar. So you will get a sheet with printed instructions and that pocket shape that you can use uh, with or without embroidery. But you can see the pocket is stitched there. Remember Remember that was color one and two. It's stitched in, stitched in red thread on the soft and sheer. Now you use that soft and sheer template that you just made, put it over your fussy fabric to fussy cut, and now you can let, put it right where you want. I have it on the girl's head there, and so I have it just where I wanted it to be. And then use a marker. I use the Frixon markers, and you just mark those top corners of the pocket, and the Frixon marker goes right through the soft and sheer. You don't even have to stick a pin in or anything. That's the great thing about making soft and sheer patterns because the templates that you make out of those can be marked right through. I usually mark the center bottom as well. So for the theme fabric, notice we have a little giraffe now, and it was marked around the giraffe that I wanted to show, but what did we use for placement? Remember we stitched that first pocket outline? It had a top on the right and a top on the left, and that's where we put those dots that were at the top of our pocket because, again, this has to be upside down so that it'll fold down and become the pocket. And then finish it in the same way. Spencer, one of the cameramen on our video set, here he is. He loved these pockets. And I can tell you that young men just love these. We did him the little cat pocket, and Ellen sewed it on for him, and he was thrilled. So try some of those pockets of love. There's adorable children's pockets in the Sulky Embroidery Club. Just go to sulkyembroideryclub.com, register if you haven't. It's free to register, and then there are lots of designs, and they are very inexpensive. So take a look at these darling children's pockets with teddy bears peeking out and ladies' pockets with flowers peeking out. And this was an idea from Sandy, one of our Embroidery Zen students. And this pillow was made from the shirt of a loved one who passed away. And the message is, this is a shirt I used to wear. Whenever you hold it, know I am there. Love, Nanny. So there's all kinds of ways to share your love and your remembering. And we think of Carol tonight, and we dedicated this entire webinar to her and all of the things that she has shared with us and all of the embellishment and wonderful creativity that she has left in us. And I hope that we can continue to share it with you. And you will see, if you do these packets and try for your lettering, 60 weight poly light silky thread, you will not believe it. It does such a fabulous job with lettering. Now, Kelly, you want to pick it up? 
Yes, I do. Wow. You know, thinking about Carol, you can't you can't not think about Carol when you talk about this class because nine out of the ten projects that you learn in this class were designed by Carol. She is such a fabulous designer and I just love that her legacy can live on in this way. Um, I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite classes, the Magical Thread Art and More online class. It um, it You learn over 65 techniques and I love learning new techniques new ways to do things and this is great because you're learning it by doing these 10 projects it's a very detailed class you get detailed instructions as a matter of fact the platform that we use for magical thread art is the exact same platform that accredited universities use all over the country for their online classes so you're getting state-of-the-art support, state-of-the-art platform, and experts that are going to help you through these step-by-step. -step. And it's a certification class, which means that if you complete seven of the ten projects, you are certified to teach those classes in stores and guilds all over. Now, you don't have to teach them. You can just take them just because you want to. And when I first started, that's what I did. And they're just so great. I can't tell you. I will tell you, I learned more in this class than any other sewing class that I had ever taken in my entire sewing career. So I can't say how much, how wonderful it is. You can start signing up for it now, even and and. The class goes until April 4th. You've got all kinds of support. And look at that code there, Sulky100. It gives you $100 off. So, And you're getting 10 projects and all the videos. You download those videos, keep them forever. You download the instructions, keep them forever. You just, I, I can't say how great it is. And you have the interaction with the other students. Uh, just take this class. Sign up now. It's awesome. Kelly. Kelly, can I add that there are folks out there, I'm sure, that would just like to make all these projects. They don't have to do the certification process. Am I right? They can take the class and just make the projects? Yes, yes, that is absolutely. Yes. Matter of fact, that's what I did in the beginning when I first started. I just took them for the fun of it and just to learn. And um, it, it's great. They're, they're great classes, and you're really learning how to do these projects in a state-of-the-art way. And you don't have to get out of your pajamas. Yes. <laughs> We've already done our door prize drawing. So, wow. Look at what Kelly's going to talk about now. Yes. Now, it this we have got awesome stuff going on on the website because of this webinar. Because you're here at this webinar, you get that code. Do you see the code in the middle of the screen? It says Sulky Web or S U L W E B 25. You get 25% off your purchase of $75 or more. And that's on the entire website. Anything that you do, if you purchase $75 or more, you get 25% off. That is a great great deal and this coupon lasts for an entire week so you have until next Wednesday morning at 3 a.m. Eastern time to use that coupon I have to interject here we do have two door prizes this evening oh. so let me back up here and uh, randomly select a name remember everybody that's online right now is eligible to win the door prize. You don't have to send me an email message to enter. I'm going to randomly select a lucky winner and it looks like it's going to be Beverly Seymour. Beverly Seymour, are you there? Type in a, a comment to say I'm the winner. Beverly, I'd like for you to send me a message at SalkyWebinar at gmail.com and all I need is your shipping address. So congratulations, Beverly and Karen. Karen Sell was our first winner, our first door prize winner. Congratulations. And of course, don't forget this, 25% off, 75 plus purchase. Great. 
Kelly, do you want to talk about Express Yourself with Sulky on Facebook and blog? I do. It is, uh, of course, it means a lot to me. I do a lot on the blog, and I'm uh, the main person that you're talking to when you're on Facebook and on Instagram. We're at, at Sulky Threads on Instagram, and uh, we've got some great blog posts that I just put up. I just did a calendar organizer tutorial, and uh, we I've got some wonderful Valentine's projects that are coming in the next uh, couple weeks. So please come and check us out, subscribe, like us on Facebook, share our pages to your friends so that they can like us as well, and uh, just come see what we've got. I love, we, we are here to inspire you and answer questions, so come on over and ask us questions. Wow. All right, here's the next big thing. And let me tell you, this took this took a lot of convincing, but I am glad we did it. We have some a few items that are only tonight, only for a few hours till 3 a.m. Eastern time. That's midnight for you guys on the Pacific Coast. And 40% off these items. Go ahead to the next slide. So this is what we have 40% off on these three items. We've got it on the Poly Deco Embroider's Dream package. Now, we're saying 40% off, but that slimline is already a discounted item. So really, it's, it's more like getting 50 to 60% off that item um, for those threads. The Rayon Dream, also same thing. And then that wonderful stabilizer assortment. And I've, this is not a, something that we do very often. So if you've had your eye on these, go ahead and tell your hubby he's already bought you his Valentine's present. And you go ahead and buy that before 3 a.m. Eastern time. It will be at sulky.com slash web special. You will need to put that in your browser in order to, to get, that, get to that page because it's not a public page. It's just for you guys here on the webinar. Sulky.com slash web special. So thank you all very much for attending and thank you to our special guests tonight. All of us on the Salky team here really pulled this one off, but an extra thank you to Sue Hausman and Ellen Osten for sharing their knowledge and a lot of tips and techniques that really just add to our repertoire of our sewing skills now. And I'm just really excited that we can all start making a lot of fun pockets and wearing them um, and displaying them on our tote bags. So if you ladies would like to say goodnight to everybody, we're going to leave this screen up for a few more minutes. Our webinar has come to an end already. It's been an hour. And we will Happy have... Happy um, everybody. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> yes. You are welcome. <laughs> Sunshine and smiles from Ellen in Florida. Thank you, Ellen, for jumping in there and saving me. <laughs> it was my pleasure. Thanks for coming, everybody. I, it was great. If, if there's anyone out there who has a question that we didn't get answered tonight, we'll answer as many as we can in the question and answer the downloadable uh, handout that you'll get, and that'll be available by the end of the week, maybe sooner. And if you have a specific question on any of the information that you got here tonight, you can email me at info, I-N-F-O, at selkie.com, and I'll get that. This is Patty Lee, or you can email me at p-a-t-t-i dot lee at selkie.com. I'm here for you. <laughs>